like to know how to paint this really pretty wilting anemone then you're in the right place because in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint it with easy to follow steps no matter what your level. Let's get into it. Okay, let's talk about materials really quickly. Today I'm using a cold press 50% cotton paper from Etcher, along with my little palettes here that I'm going to be using. They're ceramic, so they clean really quickly. And a selection of different brushes here, including my spotter, pointed round, and my eradicator brush. And the paints I've chosen to use today are from my selection from A Gallo. And this is a little color chart that I use to match my colors up and it makes it super easy and I'll talk to you a little bit more about this video on the top of the screen. If you'd like to do a screenshot of the colors here, these are the colors that I'm using and all of the materials I'm going to be using today, I will link in the description box below. This is how I trace down my drawing and I provide you with a free reference and an outline to trace down from and I'll tell you a little later on in this video how you can obtain them. If you don't have the materials I'm using, don't worry, use the nearest that you have. Okay, I have a clean glass of water and some kitchen paper and I'm using my old brush here to mix up the colours. Now, if you are new to watercolour painting, it's all about building up your colours slowly and carefully. So as you can see here, I've mixed up yellow ochre. This is from Schmincke actually, it's not from this paint set and um, buff titanium, this is a gallo, and I've mixed them to a watery consistency and I'm using my number four spotter. This is a synthetic little brush and with stubbier bristles than a normal brush, which means paint application is super easy. Now, if you're new to watercolor painting, I highly recommend these brushes because it does mean that it gives you better control than perhaps your normal round brushes. And I recommend these brushes to all of my students. So once I've applied the buff titanium over all of the petals like this, you can see me dropping in the yellow ochre on some of the elements as I work through. They're really inexpensive and I get them from Rosemary and Co. And as I said, I will link them all in the description box underneath this video. On this petal here, I'm using a mixture of yellow ochre to go all over the petal using this little brush. And I'm taking it right up to the pencil line as you can see here. And I'll use this technique until all of the petals are finished. Now, watercolour is all about building up your layers slowly and carefully, and the thinner your layer to start with, the better the result that you will get. It's really important, however, that you let each layer dry before applying the next. That way, your paint won't go muddy and it won't look overworked. And by applying your paint this way, it makes sure that you get better control of your paint application. I'm using yellow ochre in the middle and you can see that I've taken it all over. Now at this stage everything looks a little bit disjointed and a little bit messy and this is typical of watercolour painting. Therefore I recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that you can see that tricky process unfold. You saw there I went outside the pencil line and I'm using my eradicator brush just to lift that off. Um, I'm using olive green deep to add to the stem and some of the little green areas on the plant here. This time I'm using my number two pointed round again from Rosemary and all the brushes I use are synthetic. Just dropping in another layer of that olive green deep to the outside edge of the stem and then I'll clean my brush in the water, pat it on the kitchen paper and blend it through like this. I do have a particular method of application and in this video on the top of your screen I explain a little bit more about it. You can see me here pointing to a colour called Quinacridone Red Gold. This is from A Gallo and I believe they've now changed the colour name to Transparent Red Oxide. So that's what you'll need if you're thinking of buying these colours. And this gorgeous colour that you can see me swatching out here is called Noturno. It's a granulating colour and it's very, very unique and amazing for painting on this kind of painting. If you don't have Noturno, um, a similar colour is actually um, Dusk Pink by Rembrandt, I think it is, and also Piemontite Genuine by Daniel Smith. But again, if you don't have these colours, you can just use the nearest that you have. Um, you can see me here using my number two pointed round to paint around some of the um, areas in the middle of the plant and also dropping in some of the Noturno like this. At this point, I'm not going to be too fussy. I'm just creating some negative spaces that you can see the pencil lines of here and there. We're not going to be working strictly to the photograph that you can see on the top of your screen, just um, using it as a guide. Some of the colors will be slightly different, but I did want to simplify this flower so that you could all join in.
Our tutorials here on YouTube are suitable for all levels. On our channel, we use a learn to paint as you paint approach, which means that you don't need to have any experience to join in because I show you every step of the way. Um, we are all about just getting the paint onto paper here. We don't really focus on things like the color wheel and color matching that way. I just wanted to simplify the process and this is the way that I learned myself and I'm now passing on my knowledge to you. You can see how I'm applying the paint here with this little brush, pushing it into the pencil lines and then blending it through with a damp brush like this. Now at the very start of this video I mentioned that we provide you with a free photograph to trace down and also a little outline if that's easier for you and there are a couple of ways that you can obtain these so let's just take a look. We have a couple of ways that you can access our free reference photos and line drawings. We have our very own private Facebook group and as a member you will have access to all of them here. But in case you're not a Facebook fan, there's another way that you can access them, which I'll tell you about in a moment. But do consider joining us. We are a wonderful, friendly group and you can post your finished paintings as well as your work in progress and have some feedback from me and our other incredible members. You can see here some of the completed works in our student gallery and having positive feedback is such an amazing confidence booster and a great way to learn. So if this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description box underneath this video. But if Facebook really isn't for you, then don't worry because I will put the reference photo and the line drawing right at the end of this video so that you can pause, screenshot and you can print it out that way. We want art to be accessible to everyone, so join in and have fun. All of our YouTube tutorials are full length, so join us, join in, and become one of our watercolour wonders. So if Facebook isn't for you, and I know it's not for everybody, I will also put the reference photo and outline right at the end of this video, after the final shot, so make sure that you stay right until the end where you can pause the video and screenshot it that way and print it out so that you can join in. But do consider joining our Facebook group because we are an amazing community over there and you can post your finished paintings. I added a little bit of that olive green to the mix there and you can see that I'm now going on to my second layer, which is the quinacridone red gold mixed in with a tiny bit of the yellow ochre. So everything's dry at this point and I'm using these colours and I'm alternating between the colours that I have mixed there on my palette and you can see the colours that I've mixed and I'm now using these colours to go around the little folds that you can see on the outside of this wilting anemone. I really love painting wilted flowers. In fact, it was something that inspired me to paint my Fading into Beauty exhibition some years ago when I entered a competition for the Royal Horticultural Society. Um, here are a couple of my paintings that won me my medal. I'm really proud of these paintings and I think sometimes we can focus on painting flowers that are so beautiful and in their prime. And I actually really love painting things that are wilted which um, made me want to share this painting uh, tutorial with you today. I really love flowers when they've gone past their prime and they look a little bit wilted and dry. I think they have a, their own uniqueness and beauty and um, I'm hoping that this will inspire you to paint this painting too. I have simplified the process for these for these tutorials. Um, the paintings for the exhibition took me something like 50 to 60 hours to paint each, so it would be a very long video. So I have simplified it so that you can join in and hopefully create a painting that you can be proud of. Notice how I'm using the little puddle of water in the middle of my palette here. Um, I clean my brush in that so that the water doesn't dry, drip down the brush and go onto my painting. So I'm cleaning my brush in that little puddle, patting it on the kitchen paper and then blending it through. So I don't know whether you've ever painted any uh, wilting flowers. Let me know in the comments below whether you enjoy painting them as much as I do. Also, I ought to mention, if you don't have the colours that I'm using today and you are struggling to match the colours, let me know in the comments um, the colours that you have and I will always try my best to help you match the colours that you have yourself so that you can join in with our painting tutorials. You can see how I'm just adding a tiny bit of that quinacridone, um, well I'll call it transparent red oxide that's mixed in with yellow ochre. Here and there I wanted to give a little bit of variation to these leaves, to these petals, so I'm just adding this to form the base um, underneath here. We're going to be building these up, as I said, slowly once they're dry, um, but it's really important that each layer is dry before applying the next.
So this anemone almost looks like it's backlit with a light shining through. And you'll see as we work through the tutorial when we come to paint in the, the veins and all the detail that it does look as though it's backlit and I really like that look also. Let's talk a little bit about Noturno. This is a gallo, and you can see here I've applied it in a really watery consistency over this petal. When it dries, it has a kind of pinky purpley hue, which I really love. Um, it's a granulating colour, and of course you can't really see that here. The colour I'm applying at the bottom is a mixture of olive green deep, which is also granulating with that yellow ochre mix as before. But Noturno is a really beautiful separating colour. Um, when you're working with it wet and wet on a rough um, watercolour surface, it really does stand out and it's absolutely beautiful. One of the colours I really recommend that you buy for your set if it's within your budget. Okay, so moving on, we are now using the yellow ochre and the transparent red oxide with a tiny bit of olive green deep. Olive green deep reminds me of um, Daniel Smith's Undersea Green, if you have that color. Um, I think it's quite similar, um, a granulating tone and again we're not using it to its full capacity in this painting since it's not granulating because we're working wet on dry. Okay so going to the outside edge here you can see the colours that I'm mixing up. Don't worry too much about um, mixing the exact colours to go on these outside folds. The, the important part is that these colours are different to the colours of the petals so that they stand out and make it look as though we have the illusion of them folding in on themselves. But you can see the colours that I'm picking up here from my palette. Um, again, just mixing a tiny bit of that mixture. To recap, that one there is yellow ochre, transparent red oxide with a tiny bit of olive green deep. And then I'm dipping in between the transparent red oxide and just applying it along with the other color here on this folded part of the petal. And I'll continue the process for the other petals one by one. So watercolor is all about um, adding your layers one by one and making sure that each layer is dry. It's almost like you have to start back to front and work at work out the colours that you see underneath and I know that watercolour can be a tricky medium to work with if you're not used to handling it. So let me know in the comments um, what you struggle with the most when you're painting with watercolour and perhaps it's something I can cover in future tutorials. But for now let's go back to our tutorial. Here you can see that I'm applying a mixture of that Noturno on the outside edge and the other mix on the inside edge making sure that I blend them through with the method that I've used before. So everything's now completely dry and now we can really start to build up our layers. Mixing up the same colours before as you can see here, working through my palette from the top we have yellow ochre, uh, transparent red oxide, Noturno and then we have the buff titanium with a tiny bit of Noturno mixed in. And the same process working through, switching my colours and doing the same thing as before, working over those little folds one by one. Now over on our YouTube channel every Tuesday we launch brand new content and if this is something that interests you could I ask you please to consider subscribing to my channel. Um, it all helps to support me and of course if you hit that little bell notification it will mean that you don't miss new uploads every single week and that you can join in. All of our tutorials here on YouTube are full length and you won't find them anywhere else and so um, if you are enjoying this video could I ask you please to hit that like button, it's a way of supporting me and it means that more people can see this video. Now, if you are enjoying this video and you like botanical painting, we do have a Patreon where we launch a new botanical full length, much more in depth tutorial every month. They are exclusive to my patrons and you won't find them here on YouTube if you're interested in leveling up your watercolor painting. And we also have a mentorship program. In case this is something that interests you, let's just take a little look. If you love botanical painting and want to know more, then you may want to join our Patreon. We have different membership levels so that you can take your botanical painting to the next level. 
with our Clematis level, you will have a full-length in-depth tutorial every month. And if you'd like to make even more progress, then check out our Rose level, where we now have a mentorship offering feedback to help you grow. You won't find any of our Patreon tutorials here on YouTube, and you can cancel your membership at any time. So if you want to take your botanical painting to the next level, then take a look. I'll put the link in the description underneath this video. Okay, so carrying on with the process, you can see here, just dropping in the same colours as before from that palette and blending them out. So this is a mixture of, this is olive green deep, and now that that first wash is dry, I'm just going over with that little number two round and just blending that in in the same way as before. And now working around the little areas that I painted in to start with, not taking this colour over the entire area. Oh, for some of the parts there, you can see I've left some of it blank. Um, using the transparent rod oxide on that little, I don't know what you'd call that bit there. <laughs> Just working through, um, cleaning my brush and blending it as before. Um, at this point, I've used a, mix a mixture of transparent red oxide with an Eterno and using my number two pointed round and I'm just using a squiggly motion. Now this is really random, I'm just creating little negative spaces as I work through and you can see it's looking rather untidy at the moment. We call this the, um, the ugly stage and it's something that I talked about a lot in my tutorials and it's synonymous with uh, watercolour painting and it's part of the process. So don't worry if it looks a little bit wrong at this point, it's perfectly normal and I wish I'd known this when I started painting because the number of paintings I'd thrown away because I thought it looked wrong was ridiculous. So um, don't worry if it looks a bit um, disjointed at this point. Just random squiggles with that brush to create negative spaces um, is all I'm doing here using that mixture of um, transparent red oxide and Noturno. Using that patting motion just to blend them together and you can see kind of where I'm putting the brush, leaving those negative shapes here and there. I'm just adding a tiny bit more of that transparent red oxide at the base of these little parts here and working around this little spiky area at the top. At this point, it's fairly dry, so I'm using a plain water glaze, just water on the brush and a really light touch to unify everything. And we need to make sure that this dries completely before going on to the next stage. Um, from the top here, we have yellow ochre, yellow ochre with transparent red oxide, red oxide on its own, and uh, noturno, noturno with buff titanium and buff titanium on its own. And you can see how that's separated in the palette, which is why it's such a beautiful granulating colour. Again, everything's dry, so I'm using these paints to paint in some detail now. Ideally, um, at this point, I should have left my paints dry more in my palette. In other words, you have better control of your paint if you mix up your colours, walk away from them for half an hour and let them dry completely. Um, I demonstrate this in a moment when I mix them in my smaller palette there on my right-hand side. Um, these palettes are from are made by Etcher. I bought them from Jackson's and they come in a pack of two. And because they're ceramic, they're super easy to clean and of course you have plenty of wells. I'm using yellow ochre to just add a little bit of detail at this point and yellow ochre mixed in with a tiny bit of the um, olive green deep. I've decided to use um, another spotter brush here to add some detail. This is a 3.0 spotter. This is a red dot and again it's synthetic. And I'm alternating between the red dot spotter and the number two pointed round. Actually I felt that um, the number two pointed round for some reason had a better point than this little spotter but I, I'm sort of switching between the two. I really like them both and um, again it's something that you can just experiment with if you want to. It's whatever works for you and if you have your favourite brush that has a fine point then do use that. And I'm flitting between these colours here just patting in that colour. This one here is um, yellow ochre with a tiny bit of the olive green deep. 
and I'm mixing that with a tiny bit of an Eterno here and there. Again, don't be too fussy about the colours that you've mixed to add your veining. Um, at this point, it's just a case of just adding some detail where you feel you need to. When I'm adding the veins on the petals, I'm really not going to go strictly to the photograph. I'm just adding veins as I feel the sort of natural folds of the petal are, um, just to simplify the process. Now, I think one of the favourite um, many of you um, have mentioned to me, and I know it's something that we all love doing, is adding the finer details to our painting. Um, this video that I've got here on the screen, um, where I demonstrate this again to paint this, um, there was a bit of uh, a discussion about whether this is a sycamore seed or a maple seed, and I think it depends on the country that you're from. But this video where I show you how to paint these details um, has proven very popular, and um, if this is something that you'd like to try for yourself, I will link it on the top of your screen right now, as well as in the description box underneath this video so you can take a look for yourself after you've watched this one here. But painting in these details is a sort of super relaxing way um, to, is, is a lovely part of the process I think. So this is something that you can really take your time with. And the beauty of watercolour of course is you don't have to finish it in one go, you can put it aside and again with this video stop it, pause it and rewind it as you feel you need to. This is a mixture of Noturno and I'm using my number two pointed round to add some details. You can see how I'm utilising where that utilizing that space where that paint has natu natu naturally settled to create some veinings and I think this looks really nice and I'll continue this process on all of the other petals as I work through. So just continuing adding the pro adding these veins. Um, just a tip, if you're having difficulty um, obtaining a really light line with your veining, if you add your if you put your hand to the bottom of the brush where you can see me here using holding the metal part quite close to the bristles, it means that it gives you better control and leverage where you can just really um, use less pressure to get that lovely lovely sort of um, fine line that you need here. You can see that I've mixed the colours on my palette and how dry they have become at this stage which means application in this kind of stage of my painting is, is much much easier. So let them dry out as you can see here on my palette. Now I'm mixing, um, this is Noturno and because the centre is now dry I'm going through creating some negative shapes. Again just here and there randomly, I'm not going strictly to the photograph, I'm just using it as a guide and just using the brush here to create some shapes. I'm using the tip of my brush to outline some of the stamen and anther as you can see me doing here. Again, just picking up random colours from my palette. I'm not going to be um, worried too much about the colours that I'm using. I just wanted some definition here. I think I used Noturno for this little spiky part and you can see that I've outlined it because I really like that sharp look. And by outlining the elements that you can see me doing here and adding some more detail, you can see that it really makes it stand out and it's really coming together at this point and continuing the process, working through, outlining some of the middle section. Um, again, just random, just looking at that photograph and using it as a guide to outline some of the areas as you can see me doing here. And I think you'll agree that really does make it stand out. And I'll continue the process on all of the other petals that you can see here. You notice again how, the, how dry the paint is at this point. This is really, really important. You want to let your paint dry completely more or less completely and just add water to it. You want to make sure that your paint is very dry at this point so that you can have better control of adding your veins. If you've just mixed up your colour and you're trying to do it, it really won't work. You need it to be dry on your palette and continue the process this way. Now at this point in the painting, we've still got a little way to go, but it's the same process all the way through. So I'm going to stop talking and let you watch the rest of this video in peace and listen to some soothing music.
Um, as promised, I will leave the line drawing and the outline right at the end of this video, so be sure to stay right until the end. That way you can have access to the photograph and the reference, as well as take a good look at the finished painting. Remember to hit that subscribe button and like if you've enjoyed this video, and I will also put um, a playlist at the end so that you can click through and watch that if you want to. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you think of the finished painting and I'll see you soon. Thank you.